All right, welcome back, everybody. So this week I have Jacob Stachersky on from the Lacey. I've been wanting to have him on for a long while now, and um, I think Jeff and I finally convinced him or um, something like that. But welcome aboard. We're glad to have you. This is going to be great. We're going to talk about the BCA and then also about um, water-based stain system, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, just talking with him over the phone about what you can do with the Malaysi products. So welcome aboard, man. Good to have you. Hey, Eric. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. It's, Absolutely. It's good to finally do it. So, Yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, so why don't you uh, let everybody know your background because you're a pretty accomplished um, finisher yourself. And so that what that makes you um, a great team member to have on the Malaysi team. And we've talked um, a lot of technical stuff uh, back and forth. We actually met on Instagram, another Instagram yeah. meetup. So go ahead and tell us about your background. Okay. Um, all right. So I am a third generation woodworker finisher. Uh, I'm more of a finisher than a woodworker. Uh, but it started with my grandfather who uh, was an instructor at a local woodworking uh, school back in Europe uh, in Poland. I'm obviously Polish. Um, after that, he opened his own business in 1960s, uh, building and finishing furniture. Uh, later on, he went on to becoming pretty famous in central part of Europe for doing high gloss finishes and, and using polyester and, and coatings that, uh, you know, uh, we are actually bringing in from Italy here as Milesi. So, um, he was the first one uh, then uh, both my father and his brother took over the business uh, around 1982 which is when I was born uh, they continued the business for years uh, and, and then um, immigrated uh, my uncle came here to uh, Chicago while my father worked in different countries uh, such as Austria and Germany and even Belarus uh, as a carpenter cabinet maker uh, eventually ending up here in Chicago as well. Uh, both both my father and my uncle worked for different companies here as they had to start somewhere. Eventually um, saved up enough um, saved up enough to open their own business, uh, which is currently still operating here in Chicago. And I myself um, I started. At Messing around with spraying when I was pretty young, uh, I think in fifth or sixth grade, um, but really uh, didn't do it professionally until I turned 18. Uh, when I finished high school, I, I used to go to art school at night and during the day uh, working for the family business, um, starting as you know prep and sanding. Uh, then I graduated into finishing. Then as our company grew, I became the uh, manager of finishing department. So I uh, have um, a lot of experience actually spraying uh, probably for about 10 years and managing finish department. Uh, and during that time, I met a gentleman uh, named Ron Bryce, who is a legend in the, in the industry. He has written a couple books and, and he sort of mentored me for a long time. Uh, he was the one who invited me to work uh, at EKD, which is now Richelieu here in Chicago, mixing colors uh, with ML Campbell line, uh, which later sw switched to Acroma. Uh, after a few years, I left and went to work for Worth Bear Supply Company here in Chicago as well. Um, I sort of uh, kicked off the codings program, the ML Campbell program at Worth, uh, a dislocation of Worth, uh, while I was still a tint or color specialist, mixing colors for a few years. Uh, I never thought I would end up in sales. I, I wasn't that kind of person. I was fine with mixing colors or spraying, uh, you know, in a finish room. Uh, but they believed that my technical knowledge uh, was something that um, would help us sell more coding. So they convinced me to become a lacquer specialist. Uh, so. Uh, I did that for a few years, and uh, after I think two or three years of selling, um, I was approached by an investor uh, who believed that 
European or Italian coatings, polyurethanes and water-based uh, were the next big thing. And, and he wanted uh, to uh, partner up with me and, and open our own company, Distributor Coatings. Uh, so uh, we randomly made contact with Milesi. Uh, that was about eight years ago. Um, I went to Italy, I got trained, came back and, and opened my own business selling coatings. Uh, obviously, in the beginning, uh, I did pretty much everything from mixing colors to sales to uh, shooting technical problems. Um, and uh, we were pretty successful. Uh, I did this for about four and a half years, obviously selling Malesi and, and a couple of other lines. Uh, and at this point, Jeff Takek from Malesi has reached out to me and asked me to continue what I was doing, continue my success of, of introducing new technologies to North American market on a larger scale. Uh, so this is when I uh, came to work for Malesi. Uh, that was almost three years ago. And um, I currently cover the Midwest area uh, all the way to Pittsburgh, but also parts of the West Coast, uh, which uh, mainly is uh, Seattle and Vancouver. Uh, but it's slowly expanding. I just got back from Denver. I'm also uh, starting to do some more activity in, New in uh, California. So uh, my territory has gotten bigger. Uh, I have gotten busier. Uh, you know, I believe that uh, I have a lot to offer since I've been pretty much on every part or every side of this industry from prep and sending, finishing, uh, managing finish department, uh, mixing colors, uh, do it, being a lacquer specialist or, or technical sales and then being a distributor and finally I ended up here working directly for the manufacturer. So uh, throughout the 20 years or 19 years of my experience in this industry, I believe I sort of experienced every side of it, if, if that makes sense. Absolutely. You're like the MVP, <laughs> rock star <laughs> of, of uh, Malaysia. Yeah, I saw you up in... Um, in Canada with uh, the guys from uh, Colombia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Colombia is one of our distributors. Well, it's actually a sub distributor of a company called Innovative, which is based in Vancouver. Um, they're, they're one of our fastest growing distributors. And in general, I believe that whole area, not only West Coast, but Northwest is, is, is a very good ground for our type of technologies. People are very progressive and not afraid of trying new things. And uh, obviously there's a lot of money there. Uh, so uh, it kind of goes in hand in hand with what my interests and specialties are. And, and some of them are, you know, high end market uh, and, and, and new technologies. So it, it kind of works well. Absolutely. So while we're on that um, topic of new technologies, I think that's a perfect segue. So the BCA, the unicorn, everyone um, been talking about for, I guess, really almost a couple years, right? Because it's been it's been out for a little while. We just haven't had access to it here. Is that am I right in, in that? Well, it's, it's been in development for, you know, for countless years. Uh, it's obviously a new technology. It's it's a category of its own. So um, right. a lot of times I get questions of, you know, is it polyurethane, is it acrylic, is it this, is it that? It's neither one of those things. It's its, it's own technology or, or uh, family of coatings, uh, so to speak. Uh, some compare it to uh, the water-based revolution of 1980s. Uh, you know, nothing ever, nothing has come since then that's been so new and different. Uh, so it's been in development for a while. Um, we started seeing the first test samples coming out of the lab about a year, year and a half ago. Uh, we announced the technology at IWF uh, in mm -hmm. 2018 in Atlanta. Uh, but just now uh, we're slowly starting, uh, you know, keeping proper inventory and selling uh, to certain customers or still even production testing it. Uh, I definitely uh, find it exciting. Uh, you know, I believe that new technology is is always a good uh, good way to go and good uh, something good to test and, and try to differentiate yourself from other people. So uh, I sort of jumped on the bandwagon of BCA and uh, have um, 
since then, I've uh, been working with some of my selected customers who are using the product in production uh, because testing in a lab is one thing, but you know, actually using the product in field and in production is a different story. So uh, just in the last maybe five, six months, we really started stocking some of the BCA SKUs and, uh, and, and using it on various projects. Um, oh. BCA, as I mentioned, it's its own technology. It's um, it's a solvent-based coating. Uh, it's a coating that um, sort of uh, marries a lot of different features from different uh, categories of coating, such as precats, nitrocellulose, uh, conversion varnish, uh, acrylics, or polyurethanes. Um, and what I mean by that uh, is, and you know, I actually I can run through our quick presentation if that helps it's sure. more visual and i'm a visual person so might yeah, be something let's do it. Um, okay perfect. so as we're switching over here um he's got a powerpoint presentation for us so if you're listening to this um in your phone um or in your car you might um take it back and take a look at this so that you can see the visuals at some point um and take a look at this because it's going to be great all right go ahead jacob all right so bca blockchain edition um, so some of the features of the product is, uh, first of all, 30 minute curing time, uh, which translates into one to two hours stacking and packing time. Uh, and this depends on which series it is, uh, which we'll get into in a, in a few moments. Um, so with such a fast curing and stack and pack time at the same time, we have a 72 hour pot life, uh, which is pretty unusual. Uh, the product itself is a water white, non yellowing uh, product uh, that has uh, chemical scratch uh, and liquid resistance higher than most of the industry standards, including, you know, it's harder than conversion varnish, it's more flexible than acrylic urethanes. It's uh, water white and non yellowing as uh, acrylic urethanes. Um, it's flexible, uh, and at the same time, uh, it does not contain any isocyanates, any formaldehyde, any aromatics, and it's uh, also HAPS free at the same time. So it's a high performance coating uh, that looks great, feels great, uh, it has great uh, resistance and performance. At the same time, it's not as bad for you as some of the other high performing options that we have on the market. Um, one second before you before you go into this because I know this is a a confusion that a lot of finishers has um, are when you're talking about um, an acrylic urethane or those with the whitening and non whitening. Can you um, just like expound on that a little bit? Um, like what what does yellow and what doesn't in the polyurethane um, world, the two K world? Can you? Expand yes. on that a little bit. So basically, in the polyurethane, uh, in the polyurethane world, polyurethanes consist of two parts, uh, as as the name suggests, two component polyurethanes. There's part A, which is the resin, uh, which uh, uses the hardener, the catalyst, which is part B. Uh, that put together uh, creates a polyurethanic reaction, creating a two component urethane. Uh, you can see my screen, okay, right? Yeah, it's great. Okay, so you got part A, part B, which is the isocyanate uh, equals polyurethane. Now, in the polyurethane world, and, and we're addressing a little bit more of a solvent-based side now, uh, but it can also apply in some ways to water-based. Uh, the, uh, there's two parts of part A. There's an acrylic and there's an alkyd part. Um, the acrylic uh, resin will typically get an aliphatic isocyanate, which you can see here on the left. So uh, acrylics are typically a low build products uh, that lay tightly uh, down to the grain, keep it keep the grain open. They're pretty natural looking, uh, thin film, uh, water white, non yellowing. They have extreme clarity. Um, they take a little bit longer to cure. It, it says here slower drying, but air drying really isn't that slow. It's 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 faster than regular urethane, but uh, it takes a little bit longer to cure. So if you're flipping parts or things of that nature. Um, and uh, obviously very flexible. And since it's a better grade resin, it's, it's slightly more expensive. 
Um, then we have alkyd, uh, which is the typical two-component urethane or aromatic urethane. Uh, alkyd urethanes are those thick urethanes uh, that fill very well. They're a little bit more versatile, meaning that used in more uh, variety of applications. They're also slightly more expensive um, and have typically slightly harder surface. Now those alkyd, alkyd resins typically get a catalyst that consists of both a mixture of aliphatic and aromatic isocyanates. So depending on the type of catalyst that you use, uh, which we typically have multiple options, you will get a certain level of uh, the product either yellowing or not yellowing, being more flexible or less flexible, higher build, uh, lower cost or higher cost, so on and so forth. Uh, actually, this, this, this graphic here illustrates very well. The first one is the aromatic or two-component urethane. You get alkyl resin plus a combination of aromatic and aliphatic isocyanate, which will control the uh, amount of how much this product will yellow. Where the acrylic urethane uh, has an acrylic resin, which is water white, non-yellowing, and it will only be catalyzed with an aliphatic isocyanate, which always stays water white, non-yellowing. Uh, so, in other words, two-component urethanes have a slight yellowish color to them, but depending on the catalyst, might yellow more or less uh, over time, or might not yellow anymore uh, from this, uh, you know, since they've been catalyzed. Uh, where acrylic urethanes do not yellow whatsoever. Uh, when you take this and compare it against, let's say, conversion varnish, which is a very typical or popular product in North America, it's usually sold as a non-yellowing product, but uh, when you test it with according to Italian standards, which are a little bit more tighter than what we have in North America, um, it, it, it is actually considered as a yellowing product. So when we say that um, when we say that BCA does not yellow, uh, it, it actually does not yellow whatsoever to any point. And I will skip to the slide where you can actually see uh, some test results for this. So in this case, you will see a comparison uh, between different technologies uh, on, on, you know, on the grade of how much it will yellow, uh, where the highest number is obviously the highest yellowing resistance, the lowest one is, is our products that will yellow significantly. So, you know, starting with pre-catalyzed lacquers, you will have that the rating is two to three, meaning that the products will yellow significantly. Um, then you will have <clears throat> polyurethane, uh, two component polyurethane, uh, which is aromatic in this chart. And that goes also uh, somewhere between two to three, but really could go to all the way up to four, depending on the catalyst that you're using. Um, and that kind of goes along with the pre-catalyzed lacquer, where post-catalyzed uh, products such as conversion varnish typically uh, will resist to yellow or will uh, yellow very slightly over time. Uh, then when you look at uh, polyurethanes that are acrylic here, acryl-based aliphatic and the BCA, it has a rating of four to five, meaning that it will not yellow whatsoever uh, in any case. Um, so, uh, you know, that's what it means. The, the product will stay clear and, and never change color itself. Uh, obviously, the wood substrate underneath uh, might be a different story, but uh, that can be controlled in different ways uh, as well. Sure. Okay, so a couple things that I want to key in on that you um, said that I think that um, people get really confused, especially with the European um, line, is that you know, a little while ago, you were talking about some finishes um, hang closer or tighter to the wood, and then some of them give you more body. And so mm -hmm. one of the things that I've learned um, with working with, you know, Italian coatings and trying to understand their systems and, you know, tell people about them is that, you know, you typically um, Italian technology, it's not a really a one size fits all. You have different uh products for different applications so if you want that close to the wood um look 
Um, like, you know, even getting into some of the zero sheen stuff where you don't want like a high build, that's mm-hmm. where you're going to use those products. If you want, you know, typically I feel like in, um, the American, um, system we're like, we seem to like that full body, full fill, um, sort of thing. And we get confused between the two. Can well, you talk I, a little bit about that? Yeah, I think that's a good point. I actually, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I just got back from Denver where I spent a whole week um, training um, sales reps, but then we also had two days of uh, classes for end users. So uh, an important thing to understand is that in the past in North America, uh, there was certain approach where one product fits all. So Mm -hmm. if somebody was using conversion varnish, they were using it on closed grain wood, such as, you know, maple or I guess cherry could be considered closed grain wood or alder. Uh, but they would also use oak or walnut or mahogany. And all of these uh, wood substrates would be sprayed with uh, the same product. There was no differentiating between, you know, different applications and, and being a sort of specific to that project or wood substrate or the look that you're going for. Um, and that's fine. Uh, you know, I think that today or in the past few years, as our industry has been evolving and progressing, and obviously, uh, you know, our our customers, uh, our the end users using our products are now uh, more educated uh, and expect more. But also, their customers, the people who are ordering furniture, or cabinetry. Uh, are a little bit more educated and and a little bit more sophisticated and and now are starting to expecting uh, certain things and certain differences. And and this is where lines like Milesi or any other Italian line, uh, you know, sort of offers uh, or brings to the table. Uh, Our company, as um, I don't know if, if this is a common knowledge, but, you know, we're the largest wood coating manufacturer in Europe, one of the 10 largest in the world with uh, 10,000 different formulations uh, for products. Um, uh, so in a way, we have a product for every application with every each type of performance. And uh, one thing that Italians do very well is sort of optimize the products uh, for whatever that application might be. Is it a low sheen, high texture, open grain finish, or is it a high build, uh, full filled look? And uh, so, you know, we have solutions for both, obviously, as, you know, even with urethanes, you know, we have the aromatics for high build, we have acrylics for that open grain natural look. Um, But I I, I believe that it's a good thing that people are starting to recognize this because back in the day, if you took conversion varnish and sprayed it over oak, at times it was such a high build finish that they would try to bridge the grain. Uh, The air and solvents would try to escape from that grain. And and as it's bridging, it would pop open and and you would have this pinhole, which would um, eventually not really look uh, very appeasing. Uh, you know, it's it, it didn't look either fulfilled or or open. It was somewhere in between. Uh, so having that choice is nice. And uh, another point to make is that the trends are changing. Uh, the trends uh, driving the market. So uh, we see today, uh, or at least from what I've been observing, traveling all across North America, is that. Uh, few years ago, these high build finishes were uh, what everybody was looking for. But today we see more and more of that open grain, high texture, low sheen yep. uh, type of finish, which which we consider high end. You'll see the wire brushed oak, you know, Quercus board, uh, chattered uh, type of substrates. Um, and it's good to have a tool for that type of application. And similar uh, approach, uh, we have taken similar approach with BCA. Uh, BCA will have two different series. We have BCA one series, uh, which is that uh, open grain, uh, low build, close to the grain type of finish. And then we have BCA 02 series, which is a high build, high solids product. So once again, we're addressing two different sort of applications with two products instead of using one product across all different projects or or applications. Of course, you could take a high build product and dilute it uh, and spray very thin and achieve certain uh, type of looks, but 
why do that extra work? Why not use the proper product specifically made for that application? Right. Uh, I don't know. Does that would that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. No. I just wanted to to make that point again. I'm trying to kind of drive that home um, because you know everyone's like, why so many products? And and I just don't think that people really understand that the reason is because there's a specific application um, for them. You know, I've done some. Uh, like on walnut, like I tend to think that that type of technology where you keep it closer to the wood looks better because like you said, you get into those situations where you're using a higher build product and it's like kind of filled, but not filled. And most people would go, yeah, that looks fine. But you know, when you get into um, getting real tweaky about finishes, I mean, it looks so much better to have that, you know, tight to the grain look than, yeah. you know, or if not, you're just going to keep building, building, building and having to sand back down. You end up, you know, doing 10 coats, you know, to get it flat. Um, exactly. And, you know, as I mentioned, I, I do have a passion for uh, design and, and, and high end market. And I think when you're operating in that kind of uh, field, uh, those minor differences are important. Uh, customers, uh, who order furniture, cabinetry, or millwork, uh, who are paying a lot of money, uh, do expect more, and and we want to be able to provide that. Uh, we want to have the right product for the right application, um, and that goes not only for open grain or closed grain. It, it really goes for everything within our line. Um, you know, obviously we as Milesi don't bring all 10,000 products to uh, North America. We have probably about 900 SKUs right now. And, and typically we will use only 10 or 20% of, of that uh, as our core product. So uh, a lot of our distributors or, or end users are not even aware of, of everything else that we have, but it's good for somebody such as myself or any other technicians such as Jason or Michael Smith or even Jeff uh, to have those tools, to know that, hey, if you're looking for that specific thing, we do have a product that will do that for you. Right. Um, so that's why there is so many different products. Obviously, yeah. we try to keep it simple. We don't try to overwhelm our customers or distributors with, with uh, too many products. We sort of use our expertise to help and, and sort of suggest and, and develop uh, you know, their product offering or, or or the, or the finish offering that uh, a specific company might be uh, doing. Sure. All right. Yeah. So let's go back um, into. I didn't mean to get us totally sidetracked on that, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll go back to the um, BCA. The BCA. First, oh. let's just really quickly talk about you know what BCA and how it works um, uh, from a chemical standpoint. I'm not a chemist myself, but. Um, I know that uh, you know, unlike traditional coatings where you have traditional two-component products uh, or, or coatings, uh, uh, typically what you will have is a part A and a part B is an activator, a hardener. Uh, you know, with conversion varnish, you will have acid which catalyzes the product and starts off the chemical reaction and then eventually uh, uh, slowly is evaporated or sweat uh, or, or comes out of that film. Uh, with polyurethanes, you have isocyanate, which uh, binds with the part A, which is the resin, creating a polyurethanic reaction. Uh, with uh, water-based two-component coatings, uh, you will have a cross-linker, which will just strengthen that uh, cross-linking uh, sort of uh, property of, of the water-based coating. With BCA, um, we the part A itself already contains uh, the activator, uh, but the activator is not allowed really to do its job because uh, for it to start the reaction, all the solvents from the coating have to uh, start evaporating. And, and for that, we need our part B. Part B is a special solution. Uh, uh, it's an activator which uh, changes uh, uh, or it affects the pH level of the product itself, which speeds up that evaporation rate. Uh, so once you put part A and part B, uh, you know, that reaction starts happening, but still, uh, when it's in the can and there's a lot of uh, the, the product uh, in it with a lot of solvent, it is hard for it to evaporate. 
starting that reaction. So that reaction starts as you spray the coating onto the surface and you have this thin layer. Uh, at this point, the solvents are able to evaporate a lot faster, uh, kicking off that reaction. And this is what gives you really that uh, longer pot life uh, as the product sitting uh, in large quantities can't evaporate the solvent that fast. Uh, but then when you spray it onto the surface, the small amount of that wet film uh, evaporates the solvent pretty quickly, starting that reaction. And therefore you have, you know, 30 minute cure time and one to two hours stack and pack time. Uh, so that's basically what it means. That's where the name came from, uh, blockchain addition. Uh, so you're, you're adding one component to sort of uh, activate the third component and, and kick off the reaction. Um, and this is actually what it sort of illustrates here on the screen. Um, I'll skip over here really quickly. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, the product has no isocyanates, which are typically contained uh, as a catalyst in polyurethanes or even two-component water-based products. Uh, it doesn't have any aromatic solvents, which are uh, solvents and resins used in aromatic urethanes. And obviously, it doesn't contain any formaldehydes, which are typically present in uh, acid catalyzed products, such as pre-catalyzed lacquers or conversion varnish. Um, then uh, there are the performances. So uh, we have the scratch resistance. So if you look across this chart, you will see that, uh, you know, comparing to pre-catalyzed lacquers, post-catalyzed conversion varnish, aromatic or uh, acrylic urethanes, the BCA right here uh, has the highest scratch resistance. So uh, the scratch resistance of this coating uh, goes beyond any benchmark product available out there today. Um, it, it's pretty much comparable to uh, once once the product forms the film and, and cures, it's comparable to a acrylo-based polyester film, which is extremely wow. hard. At yeah. the same time, uh, retaining the flexibility, uh, same or higher than an acrylic uh, urethane. So it's a pretty incredible that you can join these two performances in one, uh, one technology. Uh, then looking further, uh, you know, we have already discussed uh, the yellowing properties and how the BCA is a water white non-yellowing product. Um, straight out of the can and it won't yellow over time. Um, and you can see here comparison against other technologies available on the market today. Uh, and then furtherly is uh, resistance to liquids. So obviously A being the best uh, rating, B uh, being the worst. So uh, when you look at, you know, post-catalyzed, pre-catalyzed, uh, or even acrylic urethanes, it's not as high as aromatic urethanes, and then BCA uh, goes beyond that. Um, so in general, you know, the performances are incredible. Flexibility, non-yellowing, uh, water white, uh, scratch and moisture and chemically resistant. Uh, it's an overall incredible product, which I think will revolutionize uh, the industry. Another actually uh, test, uh, which was the, the hardness of the coating, so, uh, or resistance to abrasion. So uh, again, you will see um, that, uh, you know, post-catalyzed coatings are uh, slightly softer than, or, or not as scratch resistant as BCA uh, and everything, uh, you know, except uh, aromatic urethanes doesn't even come close to what BCA is. Um, so it's, it's, it has been recently uh, tested and uh, graded also as a flooring coating. So now not only that you can use this on table tops and, and countertops and cabinetry and furniture, but now you can use BCA on uh, flooring as well. Nice. Um, so um, just to maybe really quickly uh, give a general overview of the line itself, you know, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have two different versions of it. Uh, there is the BCA1 series, which is the open pour, 
that natural feel or, or look uh, comparable to acrylic urethanes, and then closed pore or high build, which is the BCA-02 series. Um, then uh, we also include a, uh, an insulator sealer with this uh, BCA uh, product line. And the reason behind it is uh, that it's such a new technology uh, that it's, it's difficult to explain, but that component B that, that affects the pH level of the product and speeds up the process of evaporation of the solvent uh, can sometimes cause issues with uh, either the uh, tannins and acidity of the wood or uh, certain pigmentation systems. So we're talking about stains in this case. Uh, so typically the BCA is a self-sealing product where you would just use, you know, two coats of the same product. But due to some of these issues with uh, woods rich in tannin or using stains, uh, we apply an insulator sealer uh, over the wood or the stain and then apply either one or two coats of the BCA depending on what you're looking for. Um, with the BCA one series, which is the open pore, open grain, um, one coat of insulator sealer and one coat of the BCA is sufficient enough. I so how do, go ahead. So how does this different differentiate between like the isolante? Is this sort of the same sort of thing? It's just meant to be used with the BCA stuff. That's that's correct. So it's okay. it's, it's typically an isolante for BCA, but it's very specific okay. for BCA. So right. uh, you know, don't use any other isolantes uh, under BCA and don't use the BCA isolante under any other technology. Um, and at this point, we're sort of in a development of, uh, you know, we're still developing the BCA line. So you will see new products uh, uh, becoming available uh, all the time. Um, just recently, uh, we have uh, added uh, five sheen or zero to five degree sheen, which is the natural effect, right. um, which we'll cover in one of the next slides. Uh, the next um, year, I, I think around the end of first quarter, we will also be introducing a hundred degree sheen uh, clear BCA, which it's pretty exciting because we will have a high build water white non yellowing uh, wet look uh, option, uh, which typically is hard to achieve because you're either using polyester that has sort of a discoloration to it, unless you're using a special non yellowing, uh, no color polyester, which are typically unavailable in North America. Uh, or you will have to use acrylics, which are normally a low build product. So this will give us a nice option to really get high built, super clear, water white, non yellowing option. Uh, but coming back to Isolante, um, at first uh, we have developed a couple of versions of it. Uh, and the first version you can actually see uh, in this um, slide, it was just a solution that would neutralize the tannins and pH level of the wood itself. Uh, it was it was no uh, not film forming. It was basically a product that you sprayed, and then uh, uh, about 45 minutes to an hour later, without any sanding, you would apply the uh, uh, first coat of BCA. And uh, I have done testing, and I have images of it. Maybe I'll share them later, uh, where we sprayed the BCA by itself over oak, and we sprayed the BCA over this. Uh, tannin blocking uh, isolante or tannin uh, neutralizing isolante and you would see uh, an incredible difference in how natural the oak wood or even maple uh, would, you know, how naturally white it would stay and, and not change the color. Um, at that point, uh, we weren't really, those were the early uh, stages of the BCA technology. At this point, we didn't even really have an ability to put the BCA over stain. Uh, knowing that specifically in North America, you know, we will use a lot of stains and, and even though clear finishes without stains are becoming more popular, still most of the market will use some kind of a stain. For that reason, we decided to develop a, a newer version of the Isolante that would address both things. Uh, it would address 
uh, the tenant blocking, uh, but also allow us to sort of create that barrier between the pigments, pigments and dyes used in stains. And, and at that point, we developed the LQA6AA1. Uh, this is actually a sort of an acrylic uh, polyurethane type of isolante, uh, which is uh, what we are using today. Uh, we will use one coat of this and then either one or two coats of BCA, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, it's not an ideal system yet because it still uses the isolante, which is an acrylic urethane. Uh, so. Uh, we are currently in development, and, and I just spent some time testing this in Italy a few weeks ago, of a true BCA technology isolante sealer. So it will be a full BCA system uh, with a BCA insulator sealer and a BCA self-sealing clear coats over it. Uh, and that should be available within a few months. So uh, exciting things. Uh, you know, it's constantly an evolving line, and we're constantly adding and uh, you know, uh, I'll work with certain end users uh, that are constantly asking me, when is this going to be available? When is the five sheen natural effect going to be available? When is the high gloss clear going to be available? So I know that a lot of people were uh, awaiting the natural effect, which uh, now is uh, currently available and, and we're building our inventory. So we should start seeing some of this product trickling in. Uh, within the next month or so, uh, so I'm I'm very excited for that. Great. So I guess the question is, and everybody's going to ask right now, if you want to do the BCA, what suppliers? What are a few suppliers that you know off the top of your head that um, are carrying this currently that you can get this and and try it out? So you know, uh, we any any of our distributors here in North America should have access to BCA. Okay. Uh, having said that, not everybody, uh, you know, jumped on the wagon and, and sort of uh, started working with this new technology. Uh, so uh, as they have access and they can order it and it can take a few days to uh, receive the product in and they can stock it for the uh, specific customer. Uh, right As of right now, uh, we definitely are selling a lot of BCA out of the Chicago uh, distributor, which is Metro Hardwoods, uh, and then another one that uh, has really embraced the technology is Innovative Manufacturing, uh, which is the distributor in Vancouver, uh, which is, uh, you know, tied in with Columbia Industrial on Vancouver Island. So uh, I would say that Innovative has sort of pioneered um, this technology uh, in production or with their end users and, and have been pushing the envelope and then the Chicago distributor is, is, is right behind them and uh, obviously they're both of my distributors and I, uh, as I mentioned earlier I'm very excited about new technologies about high end and pushing the limits and, and really doing things that uh, were impossible a few years ago so uh, I hope that within the next few months, more and more of my distributors will uh, embrace this uh, and start uh, using this technology and offering to their customers. Yeah, sounds great. I'd like to get some my hands on it and take it for a test drive myself because I've I've. I've heard about it being talked for, you know, like I said, about a year or so, and um, just nobody I know has it. So that's good. I've done business with uh, Metro um, Hardwoods in the past, so maybe I'll call them up and get some. Um, good, good. So uh, really quickly before we finish off about uh, talking about BCA, I'll just show you what is available today. Uh, so, you know, the BCA1 series, uh, the low build open green is available in 10, 20 and 30 sheens. Uh, it uses its own uh, specific solvent and, and, uh, and catalyst. Um, then uh, we have the BCA2 series, which is the high build uh, version of it. And uh, that was available in 20, 30 and 50 sheens. Uh, but today we also added 10 and 70 sheens, which are uh, on its way, on their way from uh, Italy at this point. The BCA2 series uses a specific catalyst for the 2 series and a specific solvent for it. So the 2 series 
will use a different solvent, a different catalyst. That's important to remember. Um, and then the newest addition, as I have mentioned earlier, and this is something that a lot of people have been anticipating, is the BCA03, uh, which is a specific natural effect or natural feel, five sheen, uh, open grain, low build uh, BCA product, which uh, there are a few customers in the Northwest, uh, both in Seattle and Vancouver, that have been awaiting this for months and, and have tested the earlier versions of this uh, product um, you know, in the past. So uh, this is very exciting. And I actually have one piece here and this is the open grain. This is the okay. natural, the natural uh, feel or the natural look. Uh, I have put uh, uh, some type of a stain on it, so it's it's sort of not as easy to see how natural this looks. But um, uh, hopefully, you can tell from from looking at the yeah, screen. Yeah, nice. I don't know. Uh, obviously, the stain is a little bit dis distracting, but it literally almost looks like there is nothing on it. Nothing on it. Mm -hmm. um, there is that, and um, I can also pull up a picture really quick if, um, if this is something that you know um, is interesting to people. This is the BCA5 sheen uh, actually used on a small project in Vancouver. Uh, that was one of the first uh, test runs in production. Um, and here are actually some other pictures of BCA. Uh, you can see the BCA uh, high build over oak. Um, and what I'm looking for here is a, an interesting image. This is actually uh, what I was referring to earlier. It's, it's using uh, that insulator that neutralizes the tannins uh, in the wood. So the bottom part here, uh, is uh, without the insulator, while uh, the top part has that tannin neutralizing insulator on it, which obviously keeps the wood more natural. It keeps it more uh, almost looking as if you know there was no coating on it once the coating cures. Right. Uh, so where are you seeing this used um, is most? Is it more in commercial applications or in um, in residential? Um, I actually see it in both. Uh, okay. uh, so this is a question that I actually uh, have been asked a lot. Um, who who would be interested in buying BCA and why would they buy it? And who do I sell it to and how do we pitch it? So, uh, you know, obviously it has all this performance that we have spoken about, but it's not for everyone. Not everybody sure. needs all these features. Uh, it, it's always about finding the right product for the right application, for the right uh, cost and, and, and style of manufacturing. Uh, BCA obviously is not a cheap product because a lot of development has, a lot of time and development has, uh, has or resources have been committed to it. And it also sort of marries all these great features. Uh, so it's probably one of the more expensive product lines that we offer today. Uh, so uh, it could be used in commercial applications uh, because of the performance, because of the surface hardness, uh, because of the flexibility and not cracking as the wood shrinks and expands in certain conditions or, or environments. Uh, and then, you know, uh, liquid and chemical resistance. So uh, tabletops, uh, restaurants, bar tops, things of that nature. Uh, but then it is also used in residential applications. And typically what uh, we will see is uh, the customers that are interested are uh, a lot of times customers who are already using our acrylic uretanes, uh, which are more costly than aromatic uretanes and, and typically more present in higher end markets. So again, open grain, uh, low sheens, lots of texture, that really trend driven market uh, that uses acrylics. Uh, you know, somebody might be looking for slightly better performance uh, when it comes to scratch or chemical or moisture resistance. Right. Uh, but still have that open grain, uh, low build uh, finish. So uh, that would be one type of customer that would be looking at it. And it's obviously a customer that does high-end work where uh, a lot of times cost isn't really not a factor because 
somebody wants to have something very special and unique, right? Uh, and they're uh, willing to pay for it. Uh, then another um, approach would be we have customers who are bidding on uh, uh, high-profile projects uh, with high-profile architects, uh, and they are using this uh, as a marketing tool. They'll say that, hey, listen, we can offer this type of product where none of these other competitors that are bidding on this project uh, do not have access to it. Uh, and they will use, obviously, uh, the performance aspects of this as, uh, you know, they will list those to sort of convince or, 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 or get a better chance at getting uh, that bid. Uh, so that would be another uh, reason. And then thirdly, because of the fast curing and stack and pack time, uh, would be manufacturing or, or production shops. Production yeah. shops that don't necessarily have the space or... Uh, do not want to invest in drying systems such as ovens and IR ovens and, and things of that nature. Uh, they might be looking at this as well because they can stack and pack uh, uh, pretty quickly and, and keep things moving. Yeah, so, one to two hours, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, so uh, the one to two hours, it actually <clears throat> refers to uh, one hour would be for the open grain because obviously it's a lower build finish. Right. Uh, and then when you're using the high build finishes uh, or the high build series, the two series, that would be more like two hours. So that's where it's sort of the variation comes from. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for uh, talking to us about the BCA stuff. That was great. Um, I think we're obviously going to have to break this up into two sections. Um, so we'll um, we'll go we'll continue. Um, with the water base on a different series, I think, since we covered so much ground on this one.